Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Welcome back in lecture 6. Student basically we start this major assignment. We, we finished question number 1, 2, 3 and 4. And in this lecture we will discuss about the question number 5. We solve this equation for composite beam section. Okay. So basically what is a composite section okay i want to give you just an intro and then we come back to solve this question okay so for that purpose let me show you uh, some videos and uh, then we move forward okay uh, i have some other videos as well to show you those videos let me show you the so we start basically this video in lecture number five we see that how basically this steel bridge is constructed you see the bracing here steel girder here okay and you see the rest of the video okay that how steel dick is now being constructed over these supports okay and how concreting was done over these beams okay and how they uh, basically make a composite section clear so these are steel decks okay they fix it clear and you see the construction how they basically do this okay these are okay this this is a deck clear steel deck Now the bridge is constructed so this is the way that house tree structure was basically constructed and let me show you another video in which basically you see how the steel deck was constructed okay so Composite floor slabs generally comprise profiled steel floor deck with in situ concrete cast over the deck. The deck acts as permanent shuttering and spans in a direction transverse to the secondary beams. Primary and secondary beams in composite steel frames are rigidly connected to the floor slabs by shear studs, which are connected to the beams by through deck welding techniques. This allows the floor slab and the beams beneath to act compositely. Beam depths are therefore less than in equivalent non-composite frames. No. Composite floor slabs generally comprise profiles see. of the deck with in situ concrete cast over the deck. The deck acts as permanent shuttering and spans These in a direction transverse. Shuttering are you can say steel decks are very important we are not des designed this these corrugated sheets but they are basically increases the lateral stability of these girders as well 
and we see how these affect okay the design of these steel girders and remember we we see these studs okay these studs these are these are called shear studs they are very important because once they nail to this uh, girder they creates a shear stress basically shear strength uh, between the upper portion and the lower portion that is the steel girder and the, the top which is the deck constructed over this girder so basically it creates homogeneity between these two different layers okay so this allows the floor slab and the beams beneath to act confidently beam depths are therefore less than in equivalent non-composite frames now let us watch this video okay you see basically we have this a composite slab system uh, the beams are laid below this, this these decks as you see in upper floor and now you see this corrugated sheet as well as you see the reinforcement okay to provide more rigidity to the slab and you, then you see the process of concreting okay so basically the upper portion is, is just like a slab system while the lower is still there so let us watch the video and then we start Look, complete concrete slab is provided to the steel deck. Okay, they are lower are the steel girders. Okay, it is specified distance as you see in the top. And let me show you a picture. Okay, okay, let me show you. In this one okay so you see first of all we basically we provide the the primary girders okay or the primary beams then we provide the secondary beams and then over this we provide that corrugated sheet and then that corrugated sheet is uh, riveted or you can say by through shear studs they are connected with these steel beams and then over that sheet that steel sheet we provide steel reinforcement and then we start that concreting so basically this is how things going to be work in composite steel construction you see so you must know that we provide steel girder just below this deck okay just you see this finishing uh, below this finishing you see right here okay right this one you see this is a steel girder which is provided right here okay this is steel girder over this steel girder you see the the that corrugated sheet and over that corrugated sheet steel bars are basically provided in this direction as well as in this direction okay and then over that the concreting work is started so this is the whole procedure basically how things going to do work okay
so you see that how basically composite steel section is constructed you know the the picture you which you are see here is basically uh, is a composite section clear uh, the steel girder is below below uh, under below the concrete slab and the concrete slab is provided over the beam okay so let's start basically this example to to start this example i want to show you the theory okay because you if you don't know the theory behind this you don't uh, understand this okay so a little bit okay theory let us start and then we come back to this question clear so i use manual of steel lrfd okay similarly i have aic manual 14 edition i use is mccormick book okay as well uh, i also use for this purpose i also use uh, fifth edition of steel designed by uh, dr sijui i think so okay dr sijui and I also use lecture notes in WF University UET Peshawar. Okay. Similarly, I have other book that is Isron Ro Land. Okay. And uh, this is Winter Nelson book. Okay. So to before starting this composite section analysis and design, you already did basically the T beam analysis in your PRC one, PRC two, RCD one, RCD course. So the whole principles of this T beam analysis will be, you can say, will be applied to composite section. Okay, and that analysis basically we what we do, what we do basically we determine the effective flange. Here we also determine the effective flange, and then uh, basically we decide that whether uh, we have a T beam analysis needed, a rectangular beam analysis needed. So the same thing is here you know you have to find out the location of that neutral axis we have here we have plastic neutral axis that plastic neutral axis may lie in the flange or may lie in the whip okay so if it is in flange so how we did the analysis or if it is uh, in the whip how we do the analysis so let's start basically uh, from these slides i want to show you this is a bridge deck system okay you see the girders under the deck you see the transverse or lateral beams over that the studs are provided corrugated sheet is provided and over that steel reinforcement and concreting is done so this how basically composite construction was done clear uh, one thing I will show you this supported and unsupported yeah, sure unsure in next my lecture okay the we start the mechanics okay behind composite section those students basically who uh, who basically who, re, uh, who read MOS 1 and MOS 2 course they must recall that course because in that we uh, we did the MOS uh, the composite beam section analysis in that how to convert steel into concrete or concrete into steel basically here we start the analysis you see we have girders okay they are laterally spaced at a distance of b naught okay you have to find out the effective flange width this is an angle you can say l beam and this is a t beam you have to find out your effective width how this effective width is determined by h2 recommendation your effective width should be less than or equal to l by 4 and it for exterior girder effective flange width will be the lesser of this con these two conditions while this is for mid one interior one okay this is for this one l by 4 and this and for this l by 8 clear now uh, these are uh, h2 specifications okay these are h2 specification uh, specifications one fourth of the beam span center to center distance 12 times the thickness of slab same those we are using concrete similarly although they are a little bit different but same 
uh, for girders having a flange on one side only that is you can say L beam in concrete basically one twelfth of the span one half of the distance center to center or six times the thickness of the slab. Uh, AISC ASDR AIC LRFD specification is what uh, you see for the center side of the beam center line must not exceed one eighth of the beam one half and for edge beam the distance or to the edge of the slab. So here we have the mechanism let me show you this one okay you see we have a girder under the concrete we provide the shear studs what they basically did they provide a bond in between the concrete and a beam and they provide a shear strength as well and the strength basically are the force which, which is created in the concrete is 0.85 fc prime okay they are same as we did in concrete analysis okay and the tension which is provided in the steel they are the same as we did in the concrete sfy now we have to compare these two and we got our the required answer or if we find out the lever arm so we can find the moment resisting moment so this is a whole basically you can say uh, the mechanics behind this uh, composite section okay you see here here you see your plastic neutral axis lies in the flange so if lies in the flange how we did the analysis or if the neutral axis lies in the web how we did the analysis so you see neutral axis in a slab neutral axis in steel beam so we have two cases basically and we we thoroughly see the analysis the whole analysis procedure both uh, for both cases given in this manual as well lrfd and aic okay now let us start from this book um, also in in this roland book composite section basically starts here and here you see the same thing basically which I explained you in slides uh, sometime the whole roll section will be enclosed you can say are encased in the con into the concrete okay they, they, they are basically done for con columns okay although for beam but mostly for column clear uh, let me show you the beam we have flexure analysis clear and where it is where it is it, uh, is basically here we have uh, flexion analysis okay and you see the those corrugated sheets over the beam they are connected by shear studs and this is the cross section clear sometimes these corrugated sheet may or may not be provided with they are provided but they are plain not these uh, curves right you see okay design basis basically you see here the same procedure for corner your effective length should not or flange length e1 uh, you can say should not be uh, should be less than or equal to l by 8 but for interior girders it ranges to s1 this this s1 basically uh, multiply 2 to that side you 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 got l by 4 clear your effective flange width for the corner will be equals to e1 plus s1 by 2 while for interior girder s1 plus s2 divided by 2 so this is the way and this is the f this these three conditions basically we satisfy the location of the plastic neutral axis is determined okay now you find out the location of plastic neutral axis okay compressive force cc which is the smallest of the now you have to find out the cc that is compression strength compression force you can say in concrete you have to use these three equations asfy 0.85 fc prime as ac basically this is the strength of concrete this is the strength of steel and this is basically the shear strength R, which is provided by the studs. You select the smallest one and then if 
your steel strength is less than the concrete strength this means what steel controls and the design the fine this means plastic neutral axis is in the concrete if a is fy 0. Point, it is more than this the concrete strength this decide that concrete will control and plastic neutral axis lies in the steel okay so this these these two lines basically cover the complete analysis and design of your composite section clear now there are some basics okay concrete in compression is stress this is assumption 0.85 fc prime we assume concrete in tension is ignored same like in concrete analysis steel in compression is stressed fy okay and steel in tension is stressed to fy this means their yielding stress of the of the steel will be considered you must kept in mind this diagram while we designing basically that is question number six we use this diagram but uh, still you have remember that one two three four five this is the position no, no. so you should keep this diagram in mind okay we will discuss this in question number six now coming back to the next book that is doctor uh, okay doctor sujui so in this book basically let us see because this book is uh, i cover a little bit examples okay from this book so here the same thing which i explain you in that ronel book and uh, as well in slides so here basically the first uh, we start okay here where it is uh, yeah yeah here we have okay now this is basically the end of the chapter let me show you uh, where So, you see in this picture, the shear studies is provided for uh, connection of the flange of your flange or slab with these girders. Clear? Now, here are some points. You remember, you have your primary girders. Okay, your primary girders are primary beams are those beams which directly transfer the load to the column, while your secondary beams are those beams which transfer the panel loads to the girders clear and you see they are enclosed or you can say encased with concrete into concrete clear and here they are not encased the concrete basically into so we have two types of construction basically in composite structures one is in when the steel structures are enclosed into concrete while the other is not enclosed into the concrete um, a certain number of anchors will be required to make beam fully composite. Any fewer than the number will permit some slippage to occur between the steel and the concrete. Such a beam said to be partially composite. You must keep this point in mind. What is partially composite and what is fully composite means if this if there is no slippage between the girder and the top, that is your slab, so that is fully composite and partially composite is that one when a little bit slippage is occurred most composite construction and building utilizes foam steel deck you see that corrugated which serves as foam work for the concrete slab and is lip basically in steel structure you see in the video basically we don't need any uh, foam work you can say a uh, shuttering etc uh, basically those corrugated sheets work like a foam work clear Almost all highways bridges that use steel beams are of composite constructions and composite beams are frequently most economical alternative buildings as well. Okay, uh, because they are lighter in section you can say. 
uh, here we have the mechanism uh, clear the concrete slab thickness is basically denoted by t and the neutral axis yt and yb basically they are denoted so we ignore this example because this is this is this example as in the transform section here you we have start flexure strength okay and you know what is compact section what is non compact section and you are all these things you know okay what what we need to understand we have to understand this, these two diagrams clear we have to find out the effective width that is b or b e okay the thickness of the slab is denoted by t okay or t s sometime the thickness of the concrete block okay it is it is fully stressed and its strength will be 0.85 fc prime and it's the its thickness or you can say the depth of the concrete block is denoted by a same like in as we did in concrete analysis this is the location of plastic neutral axis below plastic neutral axis your your girder basically uh, is under tension while above your plastic neutral axis your concrete will be in compression the st steel will be uh, stressed to their yielding okay now here you see basically here neutral axis lies you see in uh, in neutral neutral axis basically lies in the into the flange you see into the flange not into the uh, not into the concrete basically okay into the flange but but above you see but here you can see that uh, your your neutral axis lies into the concrete so basically these two cases are very important and we have to determine what case basically exist clear now here the analysis basically in that case the analysis is simple okay but in this case basically uh, because some portion of your flange comes under uh, under 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 compression you see this portion you write here you see this portion of your flange which is steel portion comes under compression while the rest below is in tension and similarly the above portion which is the portion of the concrete is also in compression so you have two compression cc cf that is the compression force developed into the steel and here you have tension force so basically that is you can say a t beam analysis then we need it in that case we need it basically uh, in that case that above case we, we we do the analysis as a rectangular beam analysis as we did in rcc basically rcd and similarly here in these cases this is case two basically this is a little bit exaggeration picture of that one okay so here we have to do the t beam analysis clear same thing we have to find out the lowest value of these three values and then they decide basically that whether you are this value more than this one or, or uh, lower if, if lower so what we can say the plastic neutral axis location and if it is above so what we can say the location so now let's start the example okay i think you got a little bit picture a little bit idea so we start this example okay uh, let us read the example the fully composite this is important i already mentioned you this is a fully composite section fully composite means complete anchorage in between these two materials clear shown in figure consist of w 18 by 50 section this is w18 w18 by 50 section beams are grade 50 and they are spaced at a distance of 11 feet and it's span basically 40 feet what what does it mean you see here the the span that the the span basically this is 40 feet and this transverse spacing in between the girders or in between the beams basically these are beams that are basically how much that distance is basically 8 feet transverse and this distance is basically 40 feet so 
uh, we see here also that basically you see here that we have this beam that are our secondary beam and this is basically our primary beam the the span in this direction is 40 while the lateral spacing okay in between the beams basically uh, it is equals to 8 feet clear so you must understand the statement okay what basically mean okay now we have to use a 5 inch thick solid slab is abnormal weight concrete with a compressive strength of 4 ksi determine the available strength of the fully composite section fully composite section so i i think now coming back to the question where it is this one now you see the diagram draw the diagram clearly your effective flange is 120 inches the thickness is given that is 5 inches and you have w1850 section mean that the clear depth of the section is 18 feet clear f y is 50 ksi center to center spacing that is the transverse spacing is 11 feet span length is 40 feet fc frame 4 ksi we have to determine just 5e mn mean that the strength of this section an analysis question not a design question clear so that's why it is a simple question let me draw the strength diagram okay uh, basically you see here the lower portion will be in tension and the above portion will be in compression that is your concrete compression and this is your tension diagram as we did basically in our in our concrete analysis basically we draw this section as well and we draw such a diagram okay i think you people remember this diagram okay we we ignore this portion and we make it basically uh, we make it it as a rectangular diagram okay with niche diagram you say so we ignore this and okay and we 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 say that basically the the, the diff okay uh, that is c and here we have basically here we have c that is the compression total c and it lies a distance of a distance of a okay and how we determine that a value you see here as well and basically we have lower portion and the lower portion is ignored okay and we say this is our tension t basically this is not in that direction this is um, let me no this is not in this direction this will be in this direction clear this is tension force and this tension force is nothing it is a s f y clear so then we come uh, compare these two and we also determine the lever arm okay we need this lever arm and here we do the same thing clear so this is your concrete compression diagram and cc compression okay and basically a over 2 here one thing which i make a mistake uh, when we do basically that uh, analysis like here Mm, let me come back to the point okay this a is not this basically this 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 is dividing by two and here basically the, the the thickness of this block is basically a okay so sorry for that mistake the because the total depth is basically c clear from this uh, yes this one this depth is basically c okay and i think so a is equal to beta 1 into c okay beta 1 into c so this is how we did in 
concrete analysis. Here you see we have CC. CC lies a distance of a by 2 and the top this is the top of the flange. This line is basically passes from the top of the flange and the, the distance between the CC and the top of the flange is y2 and the distance between uh, the tension force where it lies uh, remember that when you are uh, when such condition exists mean that here we basically assume uh, our plastic neutral axis lies basically in concrete so in this case basically tension will be at a distance of d by 2 and d by 2 so 9 inches and 9 inches and the distance in between the cc and the t is denoted by y and I think so in letter we, uh, we denote this distance uh, in letter I will check it I denote this by y1 so you can find out y equals to y1 plus y2 okay this is how we uh, got that value y so here what I I denote the whole value or you can say the lever arm this is a lever arm clear this is a lever arm now a is is 14.7 square inches go uh, to the manual okay and search this section and select your as that is a g if i show you let me show you it takes time therefore i want to to shorten my video okay uh, but it is easy okay it is not difficult you have to just go to the contents okay here we have w shape and here you scroll down and search the section okay and this is basically w10 we have w18 section i think so we have w1850 section clear so w1850 section where w14 still we have w16 and there we have w18 by w18 by 50 section clear so here we have w50 this one clear and this is your ag this is your ag or as clear uh, 14.7 clear so this how we select basically that as 14.7 T is nothing as FY, you just multiply FY is 50, multiply it with this value, you got this one. And your CC 0.85 say prime into AC area of concrete. Now, what is area of concrete? Thickness, okay, that is thickness, multiply with your 120, that is effective width, and it is given. 120 is basically given, okay. Well, let me check whether it is given or not given. Clear? Uh, yeah, it is given. Here you see, this is effective width, 120 is given and thickness of the slab. So, you, if you multiply 5 with 120, you got the area of concrete, okay. Remember, here AC is nothing, is the area of this concrete block, this concrete block, area of this concrete block, clear. And that is nothing, basically, you can find out, mm. let me remove it yeah this one how you got this this area okay 120 multiplied by 5 okay you got that one now let me back to the to the question uh, here we have cc 0.85 fc frame okay fc frame 120 into 4 fc frame 4 and you got 20 40 okay now what will be your uh, your uh, your force okay that is the smallest in between these two still we don't have any other force uh, so just we see in the in the book as well here we have basically this one so still we ignoring this one and we have these two values so we have to select the smallest one from these two uh, so that why we select 735k we need to determine a so a is nothing you know a is fy divided by fc prime into d okay if you if you check this a in your concrete books 
ओके सो यू नीड टू हेयर ओके एज ए इज एफ वर्ड वर्ड जीरो पॉइंट एट फाइव एफ सी फ्राइम इन टू बी बट बी विल बी द इफेक्टिव वेड दैट इज वन ट्वेंटी इफ यू डूइंग इफ यू इफ यू इफ यूर फर्स्ट केस एग्जिस्ट मीन दैट यूर फ्लैंज इज यूर न्यूट्रल एक्सेस विद इन द कंक्रीट सेक्शन नॉट इन द वेव क्लैर सो वेन यू आर डूइंग एज अ रेक्टेंगुलर बीम एनालिसिस क्लैर सो वन पॉइंट एट जीरो यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट एट वाई टू वाई टू इज क्लियर द टोटल डेफ्थ इज वट ओके फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट टू दिस पॉइंट यू हैव फाइव इंचज ओके दिस इज फाइव इंचज सो यू नीड टू सब्ट्रैक्ट दैट ए ओवर टू ए ए ओवर टू यस सो यू यू विल गॉट दैट वाई टू सो दैट्स वाई बेसिकली दैट दैट डिटर्मिन द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई टू राइट हेयर फाइव माइनस ए ओवर टू or you can also calculate y so you see y is d over 2 plus y2 r you can determine it d by 2 plus tc minus a over 2 okay so d over 2 is 9 inches plus tc is 5 inches minus a over 2 that is 13.1 okay or 9 plus y2 you just add this these two you got your y value now what will be your Moment of resistance phi I m in phi b into t into y because what is moment? Okay, moment is nothing. You all know better that if you multiply a lever arm that is l a basically, so you got your moment of resistance. Okay, your nominal moment of resistance is what mean the force you got multiply by the lever arm. That is your moment of resistance. So the force which you got is seven thirty five. That is your okay. And lever arm is basically nothing. That is y. And you got the value of y. That is basically how much? Your y value is thirteen point one. So that's why you just multiply that value and you got your required answer. So this ends up this. question if you have any uh, question regarding this lecture you can contact me and uh, any suggestions any questions okay uh,